Jerusalem. The compass was first used, according to researchers, by Arabs who learned it from the Chinese. The Chinese used it for divination. The Muslims were the first to use it for navigation. And, 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 and that is, is an established fact. Next. Graph paper is an early Muslim invention. And this is, doesn't get to Europe until the 19th century. Or Well, actually, Descartes uses it. But it doesn't become commonly used. But the Muslims invented graph paper. Next. Cartography, hadith wala haraj al Idrisi. Next. University chair, al Kursi. And I, I wish, I, you know, the time's up. So next, I just want to get to the end of this. Academic count, next. <laughs> Diplomas are a Muslim. Next. Next. Education of women. And in the 13th century, there were more women teaching in Muslim universities, according to an English study that was done two years ago, there were more women teaching in Muslim universities per capita than there are today in the West. And that is a fact. Next. And Imam al-Sakhawi said uh, about Umm Hani that he took all of the Musal Salat from her and heard her recite Surah al sat in a beautiful voice. And Imam al-Sakhawi is one of the greatest muhaddithin of our tradition, a man of taqwa the teacher of Sidi Ahmed Zarruq, the libraries, Hadith Wada Haraj. In, in Egypt, there was over a million books in one of the libraries there. Today, the Library of Congress has 7 million books. Uh, the library in New York, Library of Congress has 25 million. But, I mean, this is printed. Those were handwritten manuscripts. Arabian Nights, massive influence on the West. Next. Language. Yeah. I, next, yeah, just go through this. A lot of you know these things. Moher, Mohayar, Moher jackets. Next, next, next. <laughs> Paper. Chinese invented it, Sailun, in the first century. It gets to Baghdad by the late 8th century, and they teach it, and then it's introduced into Europe, and paper changes the world. Next. Next. Board games, chess, another thinking game, the thinking man's game, is uh, from India, Shatranj, um, and the Arabs develop it, introduce it into, and, and some of our ulama considered it acceptable for military people to learn strategies as long as it, they didn't delay the prayers, according to Qad Ayyab. But interestingly, the, it was the Arabs had the queen was the weakest the weakest piece and it was the French that introduced the, uh, the, the what they called the crazy queen uh, oldest team sport polo Afghanis next and then military all the military uniforms come out of the Ottoman Empire really all of these nice sash is Arabic shash and uh, the stripes, all these things came out of the Muslim armies. Next. These are Americans wearing turbans. Next. Next. Tolerance is uh, probably our greatest contribution. And finally, Islam in America. These contributions are continuing. The Americans... Uh, are bugged by the Muslims, but the truth is we gave them the word bug, which is a Yemeni word, buck. The Yemeni say bug, and it means a pesty little insect. And so even though they're treating us like pesty little insects that they can swat uh, sometimes, we're, we're here for a purpose. And, and we are part of this culture and civilization. Our people have contributed to it greatly. And when David Leonard, uh, Letterman can say on national television that he went to his doctor today and he said, turn to Mecca and cough, and everybody laughs, indicates that most people have Muslim doctors now. So if they're willing to put their lives in the hands of Muslim doctors, they're pretty stupid to think that Muslims are dangerous people. And I'll just, in closing, I want to uh, 
the slang words from the Muslim world, hala, which means hello, although that's debatable, but so long is from salam. And it was adopted by the British when they were in Malaysia. So long is from salam. Salam is the way the Malays say goodbye. And so, so long is goodbye. Hala is hello. So, hello, good, you say goodbye.